this screencast video is related with short notes on the protozoans. What are protozoan? What is their role in soil? Is it beneficial for the plant system? And what are the types of the protozoans that have been present in the soil? Those things will be dealt in this screencast. The other term for protozoa is protist. They are unicellular, eukaryotic, cell wallless and colorless and animal like organisms that are basically belonging there to the animal kingdom. They are fully heterotrophic in nature and they can able to survive there in the environment mainly by consuming bacteria, yeast, fungi and algae. Their size is larger than that of bacteria and they vary from few microns to even few centimeters. Their population in the soil ranges from 10,000 to 1 lakh per gram of the soil and they are abundant there in the surface soil. They are mainly present at the top 15 to 20 centimeter of the soil. Protozoa along with other animals such as rotifers, tardigrades and nematodes live in the soil water flumes. They lack a proper cell wall or in turn they don't have a cell wall. They contain only a thick membrane. This membrane found to have a lot of sterol that helps in the flexibility of the membrane to move inside the small pores that are containing water flumes. Soil protozoa are flatter and more flexible than that of the aquatic protozoa. They can move around a thin flume of water present in the soils. Generally, thin flume of water will be surrounding the soil particles. They can able to move in between the small soil pores also. Protozoan population are well correlated with that of the bacterial population in the soil. The reason is bacteria seems to be the primary prey for these protozoans. Protozoans can able to withstand adverse soil condition and they can able to form the cyst stage which protect them against the harsh condition existing in the soil. Except a few genera, most of the genera can able to reproduce sexually and other genera can asexually reproduce by fission or binary fission. Most of the soil protozoa are motile in nature and they will be having the flagella, cilia and pseudopodia that are referred as the locomotor organs there in this group of organisms. Depending upon the type of appendages that is used for the locomotion and feeding, protozoa are classified into rhizopoda which are also called as a sarcodina that contains two groups of amoeba that is testate amoeba and non-testate amoeba. An example for a non-testate amoeba is acantho amoeba and an example for a testate amoeba. Testate amoeba refers to amoeba which contains a shell. It's Nebella species or Diffugia species. Then the next group is Mastigophora. They are all the flagellate containing protozoans. Examples is Euglena and Bodo species. The third one is a Ciliophora group. The name itself indicates they use cilia for their locomotion. And in the feeding also cilia is used. So they are commonly referred as a ciliate. Example is Colpoda. Now we look at the explanation for the flagellate groups that is coming under the Mastigophora. They are evolutionary old groups of protozoans. They will be having a simple structure and size that of 4 to 15 micrometer there of the body length. These flagellates can able to skews through some small pores of 3 micrometer size that have been present there in the soil. Mainly due to their flexibility in the cell membranes. They can swim by using a flagella that is around 8 flagella will be present which are long relative to the length of their body. Flagella helps in efficient swimming as well as anchoring and they are also able to create a feeding current for catching of the bacterial cells which are further transported to the base of the flagellum and it will be ingested and digested. So feeding current formation is something very important there in the survival of the protozoa there in the soil. Then flagellates are generally regarded as a feeders of suspended bacteria there in the open waters. The next group are ciliates. They are all the evolutionary youngest group of protozoa. They are the largest sized protozoa present in the soil. Say they will be going into a length of 
20 to 600 micrometer length. They have more complicated structure of body and their life cycle than that of the flagellate groups. Say for example, they will be having two different types of nucleases. That is a micronucleus and a macronucleus. If you look at that into the right hand side, you can able to see the structure of the macronucleus there. Their number is lower than the flagellates and amoeba form of protozoans there in the soil system. They will be having a fur like cilia that have been coating throughout the whole body and they can also be able to form some distinct patterns that are more useful in the classification of this protozoa. Some of the cilia are generally modified to fit certain other specific purposes such as filtering and directing the particles into the cytopharynx region. Cytopharynx is a region through which the small particle will be ingested there by the protozoa. One common ciliate that have been present in the soil is colpodid. They are present in the water containing pore spaces. They are having a flattened kidney shaped organisms. Their life in the soil is major. That is the reason they are called as a terrestrial aquatics that is even though they are requiring water for their activity but still they can able to survive in the soil that is the reason they are referred as a terrestrial aquatics. This group of organisms develop a obligate division system during some part of their life cycle which will quickly protect the organism under a decreasing moisture conditions. A group of ciliates are called as a hypotrichous ciliates that have a flattened form with dorsal and ventral side common in soil. Some of the cilia of this hypotrichous ciliates are fused together and form into a structure called a cili that is thickened bundles of cilia. They are commonly used for locomotion by pushing against the solid surfaces. Their function is to disturb the bacterial films and releasing the bacteria there from the surface there into the soil aqueous phase so that it can be easily taken up by this group of protozoa. Flattened appearance of this protozoa and the presence of ciri that is some thickened bundles of cilia makes them more adaptive towards the active life within the soil water biofilms. The last group of protozoan is the amoeboid forms. Their evolutionary origins are uncertain. More than one genetically distant amoeba line seems to be independently evolved. So the major types of amoeba form of protozoa includes testate amoeba and non-testate or naked amoeba. Testate amoeba, the name itself says that it is having a coating or a shell. That is so rigid structure made up of proteinaceous, siliceous or calcareous material. It is present as a shell there upon the amoeba. They fall in two sizes that is between 20 to 40 or 60 to 80 micrometer in size. They have a longer generation times compared to that of the naked amoeba. The next point is the testate amoeba always stays partly inside its test that is in its shell whether it is in a resting cyst form or even in an active state, a part of the organism will be present inside the shell. The active cell stretches its pseudopodia through the aperture and then walk and feed on the soil surface. Their population is 10 to 20 into 10 power 3 per gram of dry weight. They are commonly present in wet and acidic areas like bogs and most layers of the coniferous forest. The next group of amoeba is the naked amoeba. So in the right hand side you can able to see the both the group of amoeba that is how a shelled amoeba will be looking and how a naked amoeba will be looking. Naked amoeba is commonly 15 to 100 micrometer in wide and 1 micrometer thick. They will be commonly attached to a surface. They are predominantly distributed in the agriculture, grassland as well as forest soils. The active individuals will be having a loosely shaped jelly like body. Most will be exhibiting the pseudopodia with which they are able to form different kinds of shapes. They always need a thin water surface in soil to feed on their food. That is by changing the structure of the cytoplasm into a gel and a sol form. That is solution form and a gel form it will be commonly changed 
when they are floating on the surface especially by pushing out their pseudopodia. These amoebas will have special molecules there in their cell membrane that lock the bacteria on the surface and transport along the membrane to certain places of the membrane which will be completely invaginating into a vesicle or it is commonly referred as a feeding vacuum. A feeding vacuum structure will be formed because of invagination of the bacteria containing membrane. Some species form feeding cups. These are the cups in which bacteria are collectively taken inside the cell and it will be digested. Finally, we look at into the functions of the protozoa. Most protozoa derive their nutrition by feeding or ingesting on the soil bacteria. That is the reason they have a very high influence over the soil organic matter decomposition dynamics. They will be mainly feeding on the bacterial genera belonging to Enterobacter, Agrobacterium, Bacillus, Escherichia, Micrococcus as well as Pseudomonocils. Especially their feeding play an important role in maintaining a microbial or bacterium equilibrium in the soil which in turn maintains a soil fertility. Some protozoa have been recently identified as a very best biological control agents that will be acting against the plant pathogens. Several soil protozoa causes diseases in the human beings when they are carried on through their water through various vectors. Say for example, amoeboid dysentery which is caused by entamoeba histolytica. Protozoa and other microfauna are sensitive to changes in the environmental condition. So, their distribution pattern in the soil directly indicates the changes that have been accompanied there on the soil health. 